Ugh. What's up, guys? My name is Jared from Post Studios, and today I have a treat for you. I'm doing a Catwoman. And not that one. So, you guys, stick around. We're going to have it's a little bit longer than it normally uh, is. It was a long, lengthy, lengthy one, though. But stick with me, guys. We will reveal it at the end. Let's get started. Currently, I'm just finishing up the uh, sketch portion of it, um, <clears throat> getting it as close to the reference uh, photo that I used. The original pose idea was mine. I, I did luckily find a reference photo that had a model in the same pose. Helped me greatly in that. Because females are a little bit difficult considering the comic book versions of them anatomically are generally a little bit more exaggerated. Um, in a stereotypical way, uh, unfortunately. So you'll see a little bit of a jump here, unfortunately. There's a couple sections where I did, I did miss some recording opportunities. So um, generally I'm just going in and adding more details, fixing things that I see as wrong or tightening it off. All right, I actually do have some custom patterns that I created specifically for this piece. Um, I will probably end up reusing these in the future. Uh, there are countless YouTube videos out there with great tutorials from many great artists uh, about creating textures. Um, I believe Rob from Ram Studio Comics has a really good one that I've seen before, so you guys want to check that out. Maybe eventually I will create one about making custom textures, but. Uh, We'll get around to that. <laughs> so, so all these times you're seeing the, uh, the you'll see the canvas change slightly, get a little bit okay opaque if we if you will and you'll see things shifting for the most part almost like a sh like a searing type that's the, that is a tool called liquify if you've ever seen any of my previous videos it is one of my favorite tools very 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 versatile um you do sometimes end up having to re redo it uh, uh, to get it correct you'll see me redo the same thing a couple times here uh, with the adding the textures to sections of the suit Trying to get it to bunch up and look like it's actually curving around the space gets kind of difficult, so sometimes it takes more than one attempt. Alright, that was me changing the... Uh, blend mode on the layer to subtract, which actually allows uh, it, it to sh showcase more of the depth portions, the portions that would not be raised um, on a sort of embossment like what I'm trying to emulate here. So it basically cre creates the shadow sections in the creases in between the shapes, uh, and opposed to the way that my pattern is set up, which is kind of the opposite, but it really depends on the, which way you're planning on using it. You will actually see me try to put in some hair here and just decide that I will deal with it later.
All right, here's a fun trick that you probably won't re uh, realize unless I point it out. The sections on the belt where it actually wasn't working, I basically erased um, those sections, added pouches and a belt buckle, which were going to need to be there anyways. Um, just the curvature I couldn't get 100% right, and there was really no point in messing with it. Though if you look now, you can't even notice. So there are fun tricks that you will um, learn when you're uh, an artist. All right, I'm using the adjustment tool, the new layer adjustment tool. And I'm using a brightness and contrast setting as I've done in previous videos, uh, where I'm basically painting on the layer mat that is next to the adjustment layer. Um, I'm painting in white and variations of white and black, choosing opacity as I go. Um, also a fluctuate in the hardness. Generally with this, I'm just trying to get the shape of the uh, objects, basically like the cylindrical shaped basis for it so that it actually shows that it has volume. Um, I'm basically adding value in a more of a digital sense, a little bit different when you go traditional. But you'll see me do this a few different times to get the contrast up so that the brighter portions are still pretty bright and the darker sections are a little bit darker. So you'll see the shape get a little bit more rounded and whatnot the further I go along with this. But it is a, it's a slower process, but it, it does, um, it does come up with some pretty good results. Uh, here's another take on that. This is me putting the, the brightness, setting the brightness all the way down and then decreasing the contrast and generally with shadows, the contrast is less. How it's usually a little, little bit more bland in shadow areas. So. It's adding in some shadows. Add some shapes to the belt there. A little bit of depth in the hand. Some highlights to add shape to the pouches. All right, now you're gonna see me do some more advanced lighting techniques. Um, sometimes I don't go this deep into it, um, but the further that you, for, further the realistic rendering, you need to have more than one light source. So basically what I'm doing is I have two different rim lights, which are basically lights that are just kind of kissing the contour of your character in different manners. So I have a purple one coming, or kind of a purplish one coming from behind her from inside the same room. And I also am designing it specifically so that it'll bounce off those embossments around her suit to make it look, to, so you can actually see that texture. Your brain will see it and automatically think that it's raised. Um, makes it a little bit, a little bit more realistic. It's a, it, it's a good, good trick. I'm really glad I added that in there. And then you'll see a red light that's pretty much, in my mind at least, is coming from the window. Uh, final version doesn't have a background, so it doesn't really matter anyways, but the, one of the reference photos I was using was from one of the Arkham games. Um, although I did vary up the costume a little bit, it's a little bit more gray, not as black. As I was trying to go a little bit comic book mixed with a little bit of the games. I like the Rocksteady styles. Some more liquify tool, add some textures to the legs. Alright, here I didn't stress that, that crease too much where the torso hits the hip, because there's a bend there anyway, so that crease is going to automatically break that, so it's not really going to matter. Now I'm adding texture to the other sections of the suit, but 
still working on that one right there. And that harshest, the harshest angle on there, I think. By the way, painting in a visual circle. Right, a little reflection off the bottom of the breast there, which is cool. Right, you'll actually see me go very, very dark, and you'll see me erase somewhat if you can uh, look a little closer on that. Basically, just trying to get a continuous gradient to it. I basically just want to fall off to be uh, like that, so that's why I'm going in afterwards. I'm cr creating it brighter, and then I'm erasing afterwards so that it has a nice, smooth gradient. Um, if not too, too harsh. Maybe it too harsh would be. There is one issue with the using the uh, the maps to paint with is anytime you end up having to change the body shape, you have to go back into all the all the all the not the maps, sorry, masks. You have to go back in. All right, there's another uh, darker version. I believe that's the third one that I'm that I've done there um, for the adjustment layers. You'll actually see three different levels of shadows. Uh, I labeled them low, medium, and high, I believe. So you have three different levels there. All right, now I'm going in with the lighting for the red. Though generally, every time I tested with the actual, with, with a lighter red, it didn't really come through because I already had the red in there. So I decided to just use white as the base highlight for the most part, uh, which worked extremely well. Um, now I'm just adding a varied texture to the entire suit for the most part, kind of give it a little bit of a porous nature for the most part, because otherwise it just looks a little bit bland with all with a lack of texture in other places. So. That's pretty much what I'm just doing. You'll see me paint and then erase and then just kind of work it out in my head, trying to get something that I that my eyes view as all right. All right, now I'm going in and ha adding a much, much harsher uh, from the from the, bit, the main light in front of her, um, much, much harsher reflection on her suit. Basically creates a, an effect alluded to a, a leather, somewhat refl reflectivity. Um, in 3D animation, we call it specular. Um, I believe that's a term anyway, so it's not just exclusive there. Um, and then you'll see me add a little bit more texture in here. Um, this was basically just in not one layer where I was adding these extra details and whatnot, and then I just duplicated the texture layer on top of it to cut out all of the set, the shadow sections in the pattern for the most part. So it, did, it, it laid over pretty nicely. All right, I'm going in on the skin now, focusing on the skin. Very, very tricky, by the way. Skin is is very tricky. <laughs> Get a good, good tone and whatnot. 
little bit of hair, trying to shape it to correct. Get at least look good with the suit. I always think that comic book Selena had like a short, kind of like an active girl haircut, and it always peeks out a little bit underneath the uh, underneath her cap or cowl. Is it a cowl if it doesn't? Hmm. Not sure. Alright, just trying to arrange the face, get it look right. Um, you actually should have noticed the canvas flipped. Uh, this is a trick people that uh, a lot of artists use. Basically, one reason is you kind of get tired of seeing the same thing and it makes it very difficult to see aspects that need to be changed or altered. So generally, a lot of artists will flip the canvas horizontally and sometimes vertically too. I basically did it just because I was getting tired of the piece at that point anyways. So it luckily helped me with the face placement and whatnot. You'll see me try multiple, multiple things to do it right. Just so you guys know, it's not that easy for me either, so a little bit of truth there for you. Oh! Um, wait, right? Yep, am I doing? Yes, okay. Uh, adding some color to her. Kind of get a, generally, a lot of times, skin, skin tones will have, depending on the skin tone specifically, have a lot of uh, pinks. A lot of blues, and these are generally just because of, um, they're they're present already. Blood blood's red. Uh, a lot of the veins are blue, so you end up getting a lot of of that reflecting through, through because the skin's transparent. So depending on a skin tone, you can have a lot of blues, a lot of pinks, um, tan tan people. People of more of like a Hispanic descent generally have like a yellow tone sometimes uh, when it comes out of the brighter reflections and highlights. I was kind of going for a little bit of a tan look with this Selena because I figured she'd be out during the daytime keeping up her social um, social life and alter egos. Wouldn't really be an alibi, but I guess it'd just be her alter egos realism for the most part. All right, here I'm actually just adding in some harsher highlights and reflections, and then I'm just basically toning them down a little bit. Try to add as much depth in there as I can. The skin does not act like other materials. Yeah, I changed, <laughs> I changed her makeup color a little bit more smoky. Um, does have a, some some purple to it, which I, I did really originally want, which is cool. But if you saw the first the first set of it, was so harsh it looked like she had a black eye. So I <laughs> didn't want to keep going through that. Though. I could have added some cuts to her face or something though, but I just I don't really feel like I feel like she was just getting ready to go out. So all right, this first some further arrangement for the. Face features. All right. Further highlights on the screen. Try my best to not get it to look muddy. And some sometimes what you're seeing in the process, it, it, it does come off a little bit muddy, so it's basically putting a lot in, pumping it down. Here is me adding freckles just to add some more texture to the skin because everything else kind of has a texture right in there, so I didn't want to lose that. But honestly, you can see it actually looks pretty good. I like the freckles. I wanted to define some more of them, but it seemed to work okay already, so I didn't really want to put in too, too much. A little bit more pink, a little bit more shadows in there. And then you're going to see me put in some harsher reflections on her face. 
which would would happen because skin is generally very translucent, but at the same time, it's it's reflective as well to a point. Uh, so you will have harsh points of light, especially depending on the angle that, it's, that the face is at. So anyways guys, I wanted to thank you for hanging out with me. I know this one was a little bit longer than normal, but the full runtime was somewhere around 15 hours, and that wasn't even including some of the stuff that I didn't get to uh, record. The initial sketch process is there's a, hint, there's a little bit of coloring section that's missing in the beginning, but uh, I would say it's turned out really well, and uh, you are actually going to see that revealed in a second after I take care of getting her eyes brightened up and whatnot. There are some details that I added, like the background and some other highlights and specific little tweaks. Most things you won't really notice anyways in the final version changed, but, but all right. Forgot about the hair textures. A little bit of shadows, a little bit of correction. Some eyebrow action. Because that's not creepy at all. Alright guys, here she is. Here's the final. Uh, unfortunately, I stopped because the next portion is the background that I said did not belong to me. So here is the final version, guys. Catwoman. All right, guys. Well, I just wanted to thank you guys for hanging out till the end. Even if you skipped around a little bit, it's okay. I know it was a little bit lengthy there. Uh, if you guys liked it, even if you skipped around a little bit, please do me a favor and give me a thumbs up down below, guys. Um, any questions, comments, I will answer as soon as I can. I'm actually very responsive to that. Um, also, guys, think about getting subscribed. I have a lot of good videos, guys, coming out uh, once a week at least. Uh, I just got the webcam, still figuring that whole thing out, and be streaming and recording fairly regularly. So please, guys, stay tuned. Any critiques are perfectly welcome. Let me know what's going on, guys. And uh, every day, guys, ask yourself one question. Have you done something creative today?